All right, so before you put your cylinder head on, we want to make sure all of these areas are clean. We're going to use a buffer, kind of like this, to clean it off. Um, this one's really clean, so I'm not going to do too much, but basically just to make sure there's no uh, gasket material left on it. Kind of like that. And this one really doesn't need clean because it gets taken apart so much. Rag, stuff it down in the hole. Pull all the holes. Usually I'll take some, spray some brake clean in this. This one's really clean already, so I'm not too worried about it. But anyways, kind of like that. Um, kind of see some of the crud that comes out of there. That's actually peanut butter from uh, the um, international compound Detroit calls for. It's clean, good shape, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to use a scraper like this to scrape off all the crud. There's a little bit right there. You can kind of see that crud coming off of there. Um, We'll spray it down with some brake clean, make sure it's perfectly clean. You can also use um, and just lightly make sure it's flat. Doesn't necessarily have to have all the bad spots out of it, but you see how that's kind of shiny. And it still looks like it's a little dirty there, but that, that's plenty clean enough. We don't get, need to get more much more carried away. Blow it off with a blow gun like this. So we're gonna something like that. I'm wipe it down really good. Make sure everything's good and clean. I'm gonna clean it with a red buffer pad like this. Um, that's usually the best thing to use. <laughs> Ports up here. Okay, I want to check my cylinder head for warpage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shine a flashlight under this straight edge and make sure I don't see any light coming underneath it. If I see light, then I'm going to get the uh, feeler gauge is out and check and see where it's at. I'm going to check it there, check it here. Usually I would do this without the liners in it. I'm going to check it this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way. But like I said, the big thing is to, to look and make sure we don't have light showing through there. You can see that, but if we did have warpage, we'd get a set of feeler gauges like this out. Something like uh, 15, 10,000 is about the smallest. And I would run that, see if it fits somewhere. And it almost fits there, so. But that's well within spec. Usually they give you about two thousandths from hole to hole, um, which is, seems like a lot, but that'll work. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with our cylinder head. We're gonna lay these right across here. And I'm gonna take my flashlight and look and see if I see any light coming up there, which I don't, so that means it's pretty flat. If there was any light coming up, we would use our feeler gauges again. Um, there's different size straight edges and all that type of stuff. It just depends what you got. These are actually bars we had machined um, just for this, but obviously that wouldn't work. We'd want to use this to check this way. Essentially what I'm going to do is anywhere there's not a hole, I'm going to see if that'll fit. There's a couple spots that will, but that's because it's in the fire deck and that's probably a couple thousands worth of carbon there. So we should be ready to stab our cylinder. Now we're going to stab our cylinder head. Here's our new cylinder head gasket. Um, notice there's some fire rings in here. It's made out of some special material so it seals. 
only goes on one way. We're going to go over those dowels, make sure all the holes line up like that. Obviously making sure the block is clean first. Kind of just to, trying to get you through the basics here so you got a little bit of an understanding how this works. So go on that way. That doesn't fit obviously. Let's try it the other way, see if it fits. Yeah, so it'll go either way. So it is there is two ways. This one, we're gonna look and make sure there's no marks on it. Saying that one goes where. Oh, top, there it is. Okay. It's a good thing I looked. So it's gonna go on like so. And we're gonna get our cylinder head. Um, made sure that was all clean. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and install our cylinder head. These are guide valves. I'm gonna put one back here. Put one up in this area here. And that just helps guide the cylinder head on so we don't damage the gasket when we put it. Okay, so I want to make sure I line up with my guide studs. Lifting tool sure makes this nice. Okay, proper place. I'm just gonna do this so we don't mix them up. Actually, I'll just take them off and set them on the bench. It's gonna be an easier way. This little lifting tool right here um, makes it pretty handy for getting stuff on and off. Here. Um, if you look in the service manual, it's a J34641 is the Kentmore part number for this. You don't necessarily have to have it, but it sure makes it nice. Um, picks the head up correctly, all that type of stuff. You can see you got to take one of the cam bearing caps off in order to get it in there. And there's our tool. So it's just basically a hook. I have my head bolt here, and it is got some rust on it. These are usually need to be replaced um, every time you have them out. Notice there's a, a collar here. What you'll see if it's stretched, it'll look like an hourglass shape, like it's tried to get pulled apart. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run them on a wire wheel here. Like so. Move that so you can see. We should have that shield down. Um, but I'm going to go through and clean it up. Good. We'll put this back in our uh, engine. Okay, here's my cleaned up head bolt. I've already went ahead and peanut buttered all of these. This is called International Compound. Um, better known as peanut butter. What we're going to do is we're going to put it under the head of the bolt. That's the most important spot. If you get a big old gob in there, it'll spread itself around. What it does is it helps with um, friction getting the head torque down. So we're going to also put some on the threads. I want to get that good. Uh, a lot of, if you don't use it, if you use nothing, you want to use engine oil. Um, this stuff is rated for, um, to be used with engine oil. So that's why we're using it. We'll put our cap back on so we don't dry it out. Heads out that I put in earlier. So typically you're going to want to start on the center too, is where you're going to tighten first. I actually put this in the wrong spot because I have another one right here. Um, I should have had one here and somewhere around there. Um, so, my bad. But we're going to take these out. Like I said, all they're really there for is to make sure that you don't ding up the cylinder head. All our head bolts. Try not 
start to get it all over me. And we're basically what we're going to do is a crisscross pattern. We're going to start in the middle and work in a big circle until so we're going to start here and work like this, essentially. If we don't do that, there's a possibility we work the cylinder head. Here. This is one of those critical things that if you don't do this, it will cause issues. Thought I dropped a washer down the hole. <laughs> bad. <coughs> Obviously, before I stuck the cylinder head, I needed to make sure everything was clean, right? I didn't clean these injector bores out. What I'll do is I'll get a rag kind of to show you what you would do with your right, so usually these head bolts are a one-use bolt um, for our all purposes and intents. But what I should do is I should use a speed wrench like this. The reason I want to use a speed wrench and not an impact gun or something is because if there's crud in the holes, it'll actually crack the cylinder, um, or the, the block, I'm sorry. So see how I'm going on a pattern like so. And I'm going to torque it the exact same way when I get around to it. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to follow a different order. I apologize. Um, I think we'll have to look here in a minute. But you kind of get we're going to torque the cylinder heads to 250 to 285 newton meters or 185 to 210. So, since I lubed them, I'm going to use the lower number, the 185. The main thing is that you're starting on the center and you're working right out. Procedure we're going to start with one here, already tighten that one Come over here. think it'd be easier to use an impact gun. I'll prove it to you in a minute. They usually won't get them tight enough. Um, and it's really hard beating on them. It's a good way to make cylinder head bolts break. But I'll show you real quick on one. I'd have to get a three-quarter gun out to do this. All right, check our port and see where we're at. I almost guarantee that didn't turn far enough. Yep, we need quite a bit more. Wait, no. So, up to here, I believe I am going to check here. I always go through it once and then come back and check it, which is what I've done already. And then the last, very last thing I want to do is I want to go through and put a mark on everything on my final pass just to make sure that I had not missed anything. But sometimes when you do the next ones it'll actually loosen these up so it's usually a good idea like I say to double check your torque again. Yeah, see, a little loosened up. Like I said, the big thing is going from the outside, or inside out. Kind of a workout for you when you do this. It'd be a little easier if I didn't have to use an extension, but. But so it goes. 
If I didn't use an extension, it hits the top of the valves and run the risk of bending a valve inadvertently. I think I already hit that one. You can go through and number them if you want. Definitely not a bad idea. Okay, we'll come up here. And notice how I'm going inside out. This is a really important part. These are pretty small head bolts compared to some. this. I always make sure I put the marks the same way. It's really easy to miss one of these. There's, I don't remember how many. I want to say 36 or 40, something like that. Okay, so we're all marked and good to go. 